the last minute he discovered that 300 people are all Catholic priests. And he lost a little bit of his desire to go and speak to a bunch of priests. He consulted the Rebbe who said, go talk about charity, the Jewish view on charity, the different levels, especially the idea of giving charity quietly, discreetly. And the Rebbe suggested to him to speak, to relate a certain story about Rabbi Yossel, Rabbi Yossel, the miser of Krakow. So Rishachad went to Buffalo, and he was the main speaker, and he spoke all about the beauty of giving charity, the different levels, ending with the high level of giving charity discreetly. And he shared the story of Yossel the miser. What's the story of Yossel the miser? Around 200 years ago in Krakow, the richest person in the city was named Yossel. He lived in a great big mansion. But he had never been seen giving charity to anybody, no matter how desperate the situation. If you knocked at the door of his mansion, they would ask your name, your address, your need, and then send you packing. The day came and Yossel the miser died. And as the most loathed, hated person in the city, the community wanted to take their revenge on him what can you do to a dead man? They buried him in the most despicable, dishonorable place in the cemetery, near the wall, among all the lowlifes of history. Shortly after his death, the rabbi of the city, Rabbi Heller, received knock after knock after knock on his door of people who had no money to buy the basics for their house. No bread, no money for firewood, Desperate, desperate situations. So first he helped them out as much as he could, but it was a storm. Hundreds and hundreds of poor people were coming seeking his help. So finally the rabbi stopped one of these poor people and said, what's going on? Why are you all of a sudden in a desperate situation? And the man replied, till now all the stores would extend credit. The baker, the butcher, the grocery store, everyone would allow us to take on credit and just write down our name and the amount of the bill, but they never collected. And this week, they refused to extend credit. And therefore, we have no money, we have no food. The rabbi immediately invited all of the storekeepers of the city to come to his office to discuss the situation. They all came, they sat silently, and the rabbi said, what's going on? Why do you refuse to give credit? No one wanted to say a word, so finally one man stood up and said, I guess now we can speak. And they said, Rabbi, for the last 30 years, we haven't been giving credit to anybody. We would write down people's names, write down their bills, and then, as soon as Shabbos was over, after the Havdalah, we would quietly go to the house of Yossel the Miser. And he would look at our books and pay us to the penny everything that we had extended to the poor people of the city on one condition and one condition only, that we never reveal that he's the man behind this, that he is the one single-handedly paying the bills for all the poor people in the city. And we've done it for 30 years faithfully, and he has paid us faithfully. But now that he's not gone, we can't, we can't afford to extend credit anymore. All of a sudden, the rabbi realized that this hated Yossel the miser was the furthest, furthest thing from a miser you could imagine. That although he received a lot of abuse and a lot of hate and a lot of spitting at his door, he had single-handedly supported the poor of his city for his entire lifetime. Number one, the rabbi felt it was important to now publicize the great charity of Yossel the miser. How do you make it up to a dead man? How can you pay him back? How can you try to reward him now? The rabbi left in his will that when he passes away, he wants to be buried right next to Yossel the Miser, in that lousy spot of the cemetery, which would then be transformed into an honorable place. This story left the people, the 300 priest audience, just shocked that a person could behave that way and live so charitably and be willing to share people the shame by giving charity so quietly. After the rabbi finished, they gave him a standing ovation. He got off the stage and he was approached by a priest wearing the official collar and said, Rabbi, that was a great story. Could you tell it to me again? 
The rabbi said, my accent won't improve, the details won't change, but the priest begged him to repeat it, so the rabbi repeated the story. After he told the story again, not leaving out a single detail, the priest said, Rabbi, can you tell me the story one more time? And the rabbi said, you know, it's been a long day. If you want to join me in my hotel room where I want to go and eat something, I'll be glad to tell you the story another time. So he goes back to his hotel with the priest, and for the third time he repeats this story with all the details, and he notices that the priest is very agitated. He's pacing the floor. He's just, this story is just overwhelming him. The rabbi asked him, what's going on here? Why are you so interested in this story, and why is it affecting you so profoundly? And the priest responded by saying, I think I'm a descendant of this miser. The rabbi looks at him and says, how could that be? You're a priest, you're a Catholic, and Yosel the miser was obviously a Jew. The priest responded by saying that my mother just recently died, and days before she passed away, she called me over and said, I must tell you a secret. You are Jewish because I am Jewish. I've kept this a secret from you all my life because of the Holocaust and the suffering of our people. I didn't want to burden you with it. But I feel it's important that you know before I die that you are really a Jew because your mother is Jewish. And then she died, and here I am, a priest, discovering that my mother is Jewish. And now, and she told me before she died, not only are we Jewish, but we come from a very famous family, the miser of Krakow. And I think this is my antecedent. This is, you know, who I come from. The rabbi didn't know what to say, and uh, the rabbi wished him well that he should find his path. He returned, Rabbi Shachar returned to Toronto, and many years later, he was in Israel. He was at the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem, Yerushalayim. And someone taps him on the shoulder and says, Rabbi Shachar, how are you? He turns around, and there's a young man with a full beard, with tzitzis, with a kippah, extending his hand, saying, Shalom Aleichem, Rabbi Shachat. And Rabbi Shachat says, uh, do I know you? And the man said, do you remember the young priest in Buffalo who needed to hear the story of Yossel the miser? Rabbi Shachat said, yes. What has that got to do with you? He says, I am that man. The rabbi looked at him in shock. Here's a religious, observant-looking person. He said, well, that story gave me no rest. I decided I need to find out what it means that I'm a Jew. And I made the decision to return to my people. I moved to Israel. I married and I'm raising my family right here in the land of Israel. So there's two things I want to share with you from this story. One is the awesomeness of giving charity and doing it in an honorable way to save the recipient from the shame, which is very nice. But really, this story that the Rebbe told Rabbi Shachat to tell at this occasion that he's told to 300 priests, really needed to reach that one wandering soul to give him the chance to turn his life around and create this beautiful family that he created in Israel. So each one person that we impact is really impacting a whole world. Go out there and get them.